The first thing I'll say about student loans is they're evil. The second thing I'll say about student loans is don't trust anyone except for studentaid.gov. Not even me. There's a lot of advice out there. Most of it is either uninformed or out to make money off of you. I just hate student loans, so I'm going to go on this little rant. But you should still investigate your individual options at studentaid.gov. One of the first big questions is should you consolidate your loans? Most of you will be graduating with multiple loans, some federal unsubsidized, some federal subsidized, and God forbid, some private. There are pros and cons to consolidating. The good news would be that you would be making one payment. It's almost always a lower monthly payment than you would be making on all of your individual loans together. Consolidation is also the first step for the income-driven repayment plans that we'll talk about in just a minute. And consolidating will fix your interest rate to a weighted average of your existing rates. That only matters if one of your loans has a variable interest rate. But if it has a variable interest rate, it's probably a private student loan, therefore even more evil than usual. So what's the bad news about consolidating? Well, the way they get those lower monthly payments is by stretching out how long it takes you to pay, usually either 20, 25, or sometimes even 30 years. That longer term gives you a lower monthly payment, but it does mean that you're going to accumulate much more interest than you would on a 10-year repayment plan. Also, any outstanding interest that is already accumulated on your loans will be folded into the new loan as principal. And it will reset your loans if you've already been paying, which can have pretty significant ramifications if you're hoping to take advantage of some of the income-driven repayment plan options for forgiveness. If you do decide to consolidate, and just as a personal note, I'll say there was no way I could afford my monthly payments without consolidating, so it's not the end of the world if you have to. If you do consolidate, make sure that you do it through the government, not through a private lender. Use the free Federal Direct Consolidation Loan Application and Promissory Note. It's available on the studentaid.gov site and will result in a direct consolidation loan. There are private companies that will consolidate for you, but they're going to charge a whole lot extra because they're extra evil. So what are your payment options? In simplest terms, the three big categories are the standard payment, the graduated payment, and then a whole bucket full of income-driven repayment options. Under the standard payment, you'll be paying a fixed amount each month until your loan is paid off in 10 years, which will mean that the initial payments feel higher, at least as a percentage of your income. If you can swing those payments, this is the best deal, as it results in the least amount of interest paid. But since you foolishly are getting an art degree, you might not be able to handle those payments. If you're like me, then you had to move to the graduated payment plan, which starts with smaller payments. They get reset every two years so that you're gradually paying larger amounts over the life of the loan. Lower initial payments might fit your budget better, with the hope that you'll be making more money later in your career as the payments get larger. This system might make your monthly cash flow manageable, but it will involve more interest payments. In fact, early in your repayment on a graduated payment plan, it's possible that your monthly payment will be less than the amount of interest that your loan accumulates every month, which means that you're actually going to be going deeper into debt while you're already making payments. If your monthly payment is $300, but your monthly interest is $350, that $50 gets added to your loan every month. Please be smarter than me and actually look at your monthly statement early in the repayment phase. If it's at all possible, make sure that you're at least paying off all of the interest every month. In my case, it probably wouldn't have killed me to add an extra $50 or so to even my lower initial payments on a graduated payment plan and would have saved me thousands of dollars in interest. Are you allowed to pay more than your monthly payment requirement? Yes, there is no penalty for prepayment, though some loan servicers make it inconvenient. You can always pay them more than the standard monthly amount, and this almost always makes good financial sense. You do have to be on the lookout for some of the tricks that they will use to keep you in debt. Any extra amount that you send them, ask them to apply it to the principal so that you're reducing the total amount that you owe, when you start making prepayments, they'll use it to do what's called advance the date, so that eventually they'll tell you you can skip a month because you've already paid for it. But that's just because the evil loan demons want you to go back to allowing them to accumulate ungodly amounts of interest. Just keep paying every month. 
because the earlier you pay, the more you save. Having reduced the principal early will save you a ton in accumulated interest. So keep living like a student for the first couple of years after you graduate so that you can throw any extra income that you have at your student loans. The income-driven repayment plans are a relatively new development. There are multiple options, but most of them rely on capping your monthly payments, usually to 15% of your discretionary income, and will be further capped to make sure that you're never paying more than you would be if you were on the standard repayment plan. What's discretionary income? The difference between your adjusted gross income, as it appears on your taxes, and 150% of the poverty rate for your family size and state of residence, which sounds like a lot of math. There are online calculators to help you to figure out what 15% of your discretionary income would be. The main thing that you want to know is that all of the income-driven repayment plans are an amazingly good deal if you stay poor for the next 20 to 25 years. You'll be paying the 15 percent of discretionary income for 20 to 25 years, and even if you haven't paid off the loan, at the end of your term, the rest of the amount on your account is forgiven. However, the catch, and it's a big one, is that if your income doesn't stay low enough for you to continue to qualify for the entire 20 years, then the income-driven repayment plans will result in you paying a lot more in interest if you wind up paying off the entire loan yourself. Just to make it even more confusing, there are multiple options. There's the revised pay-as-you-earn repayment plan, the pay-as-you-earn repayment plan, the income-based repayment plan, and the income-contingent repayment plan. But all of them share the same characteristic. It's an amazingly good deal where you can get large amounts of your loan forgiven if you stay poor for 20 years. If you're going to get married, if you're eventually going to get a better job, or if you don't keep up with the annual recertification paperwork, then these systems can be a trap. The lure of having a significant amount of your loan forgiven after 20 years is very tempting and could make this the best deal of all, but you're making a pretty big bet about what your life is going to be like 20 years from now. Read through the plans carefully before making a decision. You might have heard that there's also something called the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program, where if you work in certain fields in certain locations, you can get your student loan forgiven after 10 years. This is a great idea, and it's entirely possible that you would be working in a field that qualifies. But you should know that although it's expected to improve, right now, the acceptance rate for people who are applying to get their loans forgiven is less than 1%. So it's another situation where you would want to look very carefully at the requirements and see whether or not you'd be able to fulfill them for 10 years. What's the best way for you to pay off your student loan? I don't know. It's going to depend on your life. Probably your best bet is to marry somebody really rich who pays them off for you. I will say, in my individual circumstance, I was able to pay off my student loans in the graduated payment plan years ahead of schedule by using the debt snowball method. The various debt forgiveness programs might be an excellent option for you, but remember, there's no penalty for prepayment of your student loans. Also, marry into a rich family.